Hey, I'm on the edge of my seat here, back again with another brand new video. I have no damaged all the main story boss fights in every single Yakuza game, period. Except for the gacha game. So using the knowledge I have acquired from fighting these boss fights over and over, I thought I would compile and rank all the final boss fights across this entire series from when it first began in 2005 all the way to 2020. I would also put 2021, but even I have no idea what this year has in store for the Yakuza series. I will be ranking these fights from down below at number 26, and I will move up all the way to number 1. I will be ranking these fights by how much fun they are to play, how awesome their music is, how impactful and emotional the narratives behind these fights are, but mostly just my personal preference which is bound to change in a couple months regardless. I will rank every final fight the protagonist of each game has, so with the games that include multiple protagonists, I will include their final fights as well. Now I shall move forward and begin at number 26. Kenzin has probably the best final level in any Yakuza game, period. It's one of the largest scale finales in the series. The setting, the encounters, and these final moments to one of the most underrated games in the series is everything I could have ever wanted from a kick-ass Miyamoto Musashi game. Except for this final fight. Tenkai is an absolute joke. He is pathetically easy to take down which does fit thematically into the story. And it is nice we get to slash up this slimy coward, but man he is quite an underwhelming final boss. Ironically this doesn't upset me too much because at the beginning of this finale we get a more traditional kick ass fight that would normally be the final boss, but I guess not here. This guy doesn't really bring the game down at all, he's just here to give us the satisfaction of booty slamming the ugly dog running things behind the scenes, but I can't pretend he has anything on some of the top dogs I'll be mentioning later. Bye Tenkai. Tanimura's father was murdered because of police corruption. You now get to beat up the man behind it all. Let's go! This fight should be hype as hell. But then you realize you're playing as Tanimura. Nothing wrong with Tanimura, but he isn't the most equipped to handle the most insane group fight in Yakuza 4. Also, the police chief taking pot shots from across the map gets irritating fast. This fight sucks, but it has one saving grace, and that is the epic music that accompanies this terrible encounter. All the motifs from the previous final boss fight themes come together to form one inspiring melody. It makes the fight a lot better, but it still sucks. So here is Yakuza's first attempt at a giant set piece boss fight. It ain't great. Just like most set piece boss fights, it telegraphs its moves very slowly, but on the flip side it loves to track you regardless, so it might just end up hitting you on a whim. Also it is very disappointing that a big section of this fight is practically a tutorial for how to use the precise third person aiming like but, but, come on. This fight definitely fits this game, you know, giant zombie is cool, but eh, the actual fight, nah. This fight sucks! Ah! The arena sucks, there's invisible walls all over the place, and in a fight where you have to dodge enemies constantly, getting clipped by a weird section of terrain is the absolute worst. Also, it's just another fight with Kanai, like this wouldn't be a problem if Akiyama had any other notable boss fights, but like 60% of his fights in this game are just Kanai, ah! and Kanai isn't that great of a fight on his own. This fight's cool in that Akiyama's like fighting an army, like okay, but it's frustrating to play. One saving grace is the music which rocks hard. Great guitars, great tune, bad fight. NEXT! This fight would be awesome if Majima's moveset didn't suck ass in Kiwami 2. This is the final boss of the Majima Saga section of Kiwami 2. It has this amazing dynamic intro, a rocking theme song, and everything else about it sucks. Ibuchi is copying his moveset from Tamashiro in Yakuza 3. 
but Ibuchi is in the Dragon Engine, so he's far more annoying to deal with than Tamashiro ever was, and the player is also limited to using Majima. What this all results in is that this fight heavily limits how you can approach it. You can't use combos because Ibuchi will just break out or counter you beforehand, so you're stuck just using your quick step attacks. There is an enjoyment to predicting his attacks and learning the timings to quick step attack him, but also, the last thing I want to do when playing as Majima is to be limited in my approach. A lame end to a lame saga. This fight is a copy and pasted encounter from Streets of Rage 2, a game I haven't played yet but would like to play. This fight though goes something like this, the goons around Nishiki aren't too much of a threat, but Nishiki himself is tough, his reach is better than yours, but the uppercut forward attack he can do can kinda negate this which is cool. Uh, I, I don't have that much to say about this guy, this game is free though, but I don't know if it's available right now. Saijima once went balls out. What he got in return was a death sentence and 25 years in prison. Despite this, he is satisfied knowing he helped his family. Which is why when Kido comes to Saijima for advice on whether or not he should take his big chance, Saijima tells him to do what he did, to go balls out. In return, Saijima is betrayed by Kido not knowing how foresighted Kido's faith was. Saijima paid the price for his actions, yet Kido does not understand the weight of his. As such, Saijima must take his place and teach Kido the weight of going balls out by smashing his faces. This fight has a killer theme and the rocking guitar suits this rendition of the final boss theme perfectly to Saijima. The actual fight is okay, I guess. I don't know, Kido's fair. He has good openings, but his combos really aren't blowing any minds per se. A bit of an underwhelming fight for the monster that is Saijima, but overall it's alright. Iwami as a final boss is how I feel about Yakuza 6 as the final game in the Kiryu Saga. It's disappointing. But it's still really good. Iwami as a character is just the bad guy, but I'm sure that's deliberate given that the boss fights before him all star far more compelling characters. The issue is that these past 4 games before 6 had series defining, amazing final boss fights and then here at the end of the legendary Kiryu Saga we have... Little Baby Iwami. A good fight, but absolutely nothing compared to almost the entire rest of this series. But I'm being hard on the guy, he does have good qualities. His battle theme is good, maybe not quite the best, but it is a fitting final boss fight theme. Iwami's fighting style is brutal and fast, he reacts to your attacks almost immediately when he's in heat mode, he's a dangerous fighter. Also, while every single boss fight in Yakuza 6 having a red heat aura is stupid and lame, it fits Iwami rather well. If only one boss had to have it, it should be Iwami, but overall, a tad disappointing to end Kiryu's story on. This is a familiar scene. It echoes the same kind of rivalry presented in the original Yakuza. And while it is a very easy fight, and while Arakawa here isn't as interesting as Nishiki, this is still a very effective end to the game. Ichiban limits himself to only using the freelancer style, something which he has only done in the beginning of the game when he still had a chance to save his long lost brother. This is also a 1v1. You don't have your friends helping you out. This is personal, and the music enforces that. It's sad, yet determined, much like Ichiban's life in general. This fight is definitely a victory lap for the player. It's very heavy story wise, but gameplay wise this is nothing. This is a lot like the Tenkai fight, but this time it feels important. Despite its lackluster difficulty, this encounter still holds some weight. Baba is a dude which you fight multiple times throughout Yakuza 5. Each time is a really fun fight, but something's a little off each time. The first time you fight him, Saijima's combat is just a bit too limited to fight Baba. It's the kind of thing where if you were going for a no damage run, you wouldn't be able to use all your tools per se. 
But that really isn't important because this is just an arbitrary limitation which most normal people wouldn't attempt and isn't indicative of this game's actual difficulty the second time you fight him. You're Kiryu and you completely demolish him. You're just too OP for him. But Baba shows up again at the finale of the game, this time up against his perfect match, both gameplay wise and thematically. Shinada was an innocent man who was put to suffer for the benefit of men working behind the scenes. And here is Baba, a tool of the same kind of men being used to harm innocent people. What you would expect is that this would be a revenge fight of sorts, but it goes beyond that. Shinada may have had his life ruined, but because he's the GOAT, he persevered through and found meaning beyond his failure. And now here's his chance to do the same for Baba. To show him his life does have meaning and is worth living by breaking his spine. Shinada's more unconventional style gives this fight a more natural flow and the extra QTEs thrown throughout help spice things up. The arena is also perfect, fighting backstage to Haruka's concert just awesome! And that music with a high note? Yeah! While this is a repeated fight, it's still really cool and enjoyable. When I picture a cool final boss to a Fist of the North Star game, this is not the guy I have in mind. Regardless, this is still a really cool fight, and a big part of why it's so cool is because of Targa's godly theme. What is this? How did this punk acquire such a monumental theme? The fight itself is quite challenging. Targa is a gun user, and as such you have to be on the lookout all the time because he can inflict damage no matter where you go. Some of his attacks are also kind of unfair, especially the one where he just unloads a full clip into you. How would you even dodge that one? The setting here is rad too, it's this epic tower fight like all the best Yakuza's had before. But this time, the game doesn't have to adhere to reality. So this game provides all this cool architecture surrounding you, there's gold, there's glowing things, rad! While a bit of a baffling choice to end the game on, it's still cool on its own. The homies are bedrock. Your friends, the people you rely on, are important. And Akiyama has put his faith in Arai. He saw a better world with this man at the top, and now Akiyama has to come face to face with his old friend's four-faced nature. Arai has betrayed Akiyama. Betrayal being something Akiyama is all too familiar with, yet. Akiyama found salvation after his bank unjustly kicked him out, and now Akiyama has a chance to set things right with Arai by beating him to a pulp. Let's go! These themes and ideas sound amazing on paper, while I have to admit they're not as engaging in game. This fight is still kick ass, but Arai as a character is a tad forgettable. I don't know, something about him is a bit. Eh? But overall, this is still a strong final boss for our series newcomer, Akiyama. It plays into the rival fight aesthetic with Arai having a very similar combat style to Akiyama with a lot of quick kicks. However, Akiyama's kicks are quicker. What I mean by that is that you can break this fight by zero cycling Arai into a corner. There's nothing he can do about it. Akiyama too much of a beast. The boss fight theme here is also fantastic. 4 had a great idea with keeping the same motifs throughout all the final boss fight themes. It has this great layer of unity throughout each of these final fights. Akiyama's version is called 4 Face, which has inklings of his swagger thrown throughout the music with these lovely sounding bass lines. While it's had easy, this fight still bangs. Kiryu has made a lot of hasty decisions in his life. He quit the Tojo clan in the first game on a whim, which led to the issues in the second game. He tried to solve these issues by putting Daigo as the 6th Tojo clan chairman. This worked at first, but this was another hasty decision, and it resulted in another hasty outcome. Now here stands Daigo, who has lost sight of the ideals Kiryu saw in him, yet Kiryu is not free of the blame. If he lended more guidance or actually stuck around, maybe they could have avoided all this. But there's no turning back the clock. Kiryu is here to wake up Daigo so he can stand proudly and take the reins of the Tojo clan with confidence. By beating him to a pulp. Out of all the final fights in Yakuza 4, this one is the most sorrowful. The Track 4 Face. 
has the piano front and center as the rest of the instrumentation slowly builds in the background. It's a more low-key tune than the previous themes. The fight itself is also notable in that it's the first time Daigo has a moveset that is actually challenging. This is a major step up from his days in Yakuza 2. His aura is this cool, purple swoop. His moves are graceful and wavy. His third phase has super armor the entire time. He has counters which can catch you off guard if you aren't prepared for them. But if you are prepared for them, then you can kind of skip the third phase by doing the mega boom boom heat action. Yakuza 4 is kind of easy in general, but this is still an immensely satisfying fight, packed with real history behind it. Though I have to say the QTEs are a little goofy, like dog, you don't have to repeat the same angles that much, calm down. Here is the game which started it all, but it was not an easy process. The trials of getting this game made were a troublesome and tricky process. A lot was put on the line, if this new project failed, all the sacrifices up to this point would have been for nothing. And some of that emotion is felt with Nishiki, the final boss of the original Yakuza. Nishiki is one of, if not the best antagonist in the entire series. There's a lot to talk about when it comes with what they did with him in future entries, but even as far back as the beginning of this franchise, this duel against sworn brothers turned into regretful rivals from the vast influences of time and jealousy has held up as one of the most engaging and defining moments for Yakuza. The fight is held back somewhat from the slightly clunky combat, but it is a massive highlight of the game regardless. Definitely a massive improvement from Jingu over here. Ah! He's quick, he can be deadly, his heat mode makes him completely invincible for the most part. He's an enemy which I dealt with using the tiger drop and grabs because other modes of combat can be troublesome given his quick agility and dodges. And the music that accompanies it all is just beautiful. It captures the sorrow of both Kiryu and Nishiki perfectly. Wonderful fight overall. Though future entries would improve on the gameplay, I still look back fondly on this moment. Majima lost his brother the day he went out to kill 18 men for his family. Saijima was used as a tool for said family. And now Majima is looking at the tool of Dojima, face to face, and uh, I'm trying to make a big narrative point about this, but I'm a little lost myself. Anyway, Majima smashes his head in. What's so cool about Laogue is that he's the kind of dude who is out to kill you. This isn't an honorable 1v1 shirtless beatdown, this is an assassin who will not hesitate to gut you like a fish. He has those claws in his first phase which killed the man you faced before him. This dude is dangerous, his defense is high and his combos can't be blocked thanks to those sharp objects in his hands. Move on to the second phase and he pulls out some Ishin combat by copying the wild dance style, a sword and gun, a, a mighty deadly combo. Laogue keeps a tight hold on his weapons, and the only, and I mean only time he lets go of them, is when he has no other choice. Then he pulls out the fists for the third and final phase of his fight, but he is no less dangerous here. This dude is strong and dodgy too, be careful, and his music sets the ominous tone perfectly. A final boss caked with dread and fear, which makes it all the more satisfying when you put him down. Goda's my favorite villain in the series. He's bold, expressive, and every scene he's in is exhilarating to the max. Every moment feels like it builds and builds, his motives slowly coming into focus with every encounter we face. And I was surprised with how melancholic his final encounter ended up being. His grand struggle was inspired by emotional abuse and neglect. He meets the only family he has at the worst of times, and as Kiryu prepares to face off against him, a scattered moment begins to play, cementing this final boss as one of the greats in this series. When it comes to comparing the original fight to its Kiwami counterpart, I find there isn't that much difference with them. They're both brutal slugfests backed by a fantastic theme, and I have to give special note to the Kiwami remix of A Scattered Moment, which captures the beauty of the original track without adding unnecessary additions which some of the other Kiwami remixes could be guilty of. 
Overall, I prefer the original fight for a couple of reasons. For one, the QTEs in the original fight fit a lot better. They were copied into the remake and there's this clunkiness to it. Awkward. The remake does somewhat make up for this by adding some new QTEs, but I don't know. I don't like how they remixed the old QTEs into this new fight. The original fight is also much harder than its Kiwami counterpart. Ryuji does not stagger for the most part, so your best choices are to tiger drop or to struggle. The Kiwami 2 boss is more open and also part of that is because of Kiwami 2's combat system, but I don't want to get into that because neither fight is so much better than the other that I would put them two places above or below each other. They may be ranked in separate spots, but they might as well share the same spot. A simple, brutal finale to one of the best games in the series. Well, Yakuza 2, that is. I have a few issues with Kiwami 2. I made a small video essay on it that was received very well with no complaints made about the volume of my commentary. Yakuza on the PSP? Pfft, lame. What are they even gonna do? There's no way they can make this game cool. This is one of the hardest fights in the series, maybe even the hardest period when it comes to the final boss fights. He definitely has the most health out of any Yakuza final boss fight. He's quick, packed with counters, and is an overall menace. And he also has this amazing track composed by Rice. It is an instrumental version of their vocal song, but even the instrumental gets the blood pumping like nothing else. It is a massive shame that the language barrier has blocked people from experiencing a game which I dare say it's as HYPE AS IT GETS! PLAY THIS GAME! There is a buggy translation patch which only translates the main story sections into English, but it's the best we got right now. PLAY IT! Remember when I said that the final boss of Kuruhio 1 was as hype as it gets? I lied, cause this fight is even more DANGEROUS! Shonen no Kaze coming with the BANGER! Born to be wild! This song raises the hype of this fight through the roof! This dude is also on another level as well. Look at this dude's aura, he's got wings of FIRE! A lot of his attacks also breathe fire, WHAT?! He can go into super mode and start doing ground pound backflips, my man Ryo insane! This fight, while not as challenging as Reggie, it still offers a satisfying conclusion to the sick Def Jam inspired beat em up you've been engaging with throughout your run of one of the PSP's hidden classics. Absolutely key. This is the best Majima fight in the entire series, and also one of the best final boss fights as well. Definitely a massive improvement from Sajima's final boss in 4. The setting is dope. The Millennium Tower! The music is beautiful. It's one of my favorite remixes of Receive You. The guitar and piano give this fight this great pathos throughout. Majima is without a doubt one of the most memorable characters in the series, and seven games later, we are given the definitive Majima fight, one that takes the best elements from all the ones before it. Majima is fast and dodgy, yet does have some solid readable openings which you can exploit. The phases constantly keep you on your toes, whether it be the fast QTE sections, or Majima summoning multiple clones of himself despite this not let up. I also have to mention the snow falling throughout, such a great detail, one that Yakuza 5 will definitely take advantage of in its later fights. Remember all the good things I said about Laogue? Kuroiwa has all those qualities as well, but he's even better. His presence is even more pronounced throughout the game. You know this guy. You know how this guy acted throughout the game. So once you realize he's the murderer behind the scenes of this conspiracy, it completely shakes things up. And when the music plays, when you start fighting him, chilling to the bone, this dark techno landscape weighs down on you as you fight this monster of a man. Kuroiwa is one of the only boss fights with a unique moveset in this game. And this moveset goes against what you've come to expect. The way you've been defeating the previous boss fights isn't going to work as easily here. Kuroiwa is a man of counters. Fighting him head on is out of the question. 
Also, special notice should be made with a cinematic length QTE section. This scene is practically a film. Also, love the setting with the rain pouring in the background. It adds so much to the fight. This man is truly the most terrifying final boss in the Yakuza franchise. Until you learn how to tiger drop his getting up attack, then he becomes a little funny. <laughs> Imagine this, a group of individuals are gathered around a table and one of them asks, how are we going to make the most hype theme in our franchise? This was their answer. This final boss gets the blood flowing STRONGLY! Fly is an absolute beast of a battle theme. This fight is fast and challenging. Mine is insanely fast. He's packed with counters and his power is not to be underestimated. This fight keeps you on your toes. It's one of the fastest fights in the series. Your openings are slim but fair. Mine is constantly changing his fighting styles which keeps up this great momentum throughout the whole fight. A great test of your skills which you have been honing throughout the entire game. Just a wonderful, wonderful fight. My only issue would be that some of the narrative features involved are a bit lacking. Mine as a villain I wish was better developed throughout the game because I do believe he is an absolutely engaging character but he falls into the trap that Yakuza 3 employs quite a bit that most of the motivations behind his characters are kind of dropped at the last minute. But even with this Mine stands proud and it would be nice if he could stand even taller among his contemporaries. This fight was one to be excited for. It was the best fight in the original game and now it has the extra backstory provided by Yakuza 0 and a new backstory introduced by Kiwami 1. This was going to be one of the most emotional fights in the series and it is, but for some asinine reason. The QTEs in this fight are copied from other fights in this series. This one here is copied from the final fight you have with Kuze. And this one here was copied from the final fight in Yakuza 5. Why? I understand being cheap with some of the other fights, but why your final boss? Come on. That was immensely disappointing. Regardless, this is still an incredible fight. The remix music, while not as good as the original theme, is still powerful. And it's more dramatic presentation fits this more over the top remake of Nishiki's fight. He's using his style from Yakuza 0 mixed with a couple moves from Kashiwagi in Yakuza 0 as well. Not a bad fit, I'd say. He has a cool blue aura, though I do miss his pinkish aura from the original. One addition to this fight that is very much welcome are the flashbacks. The reused QTEs annoy me, but the flashbacks throw in throughout them is such a nice touch. My favorite thing about this fight is that we get to fight Nishiki with the improved combat system. It's a nice thing to experience and a bright spot of Kiwami 1. Yo, my dad killed himself. Don't care. Ryu shotten no wa omae dake jane nda ya. Omae o koroshi kaza mo koete. Ora dojima no ryu ni naru. True that. Yeah. Shibusawa is the weak link when it comes to the villains in Yakuza 0. Pretty much every single other character is way more interesting and engaging to watch than him. He ends up serving as a mouthpiece to talk about the themes of the game. Despite all this though, he is still a fantastic final boss. His battle is legendary. Three phases, all copying each of Kiryu's styles. The first taking on his rush style and as such, Shibusawa moves at lightning fast speeds 
and dodges out of any frontal assault you attempt. Then he switches over to beast mode, becoming an immovable force of nature. The man cannot be stunned. Finally, he adopts what he believes will be worthy as a fighting style for the Dragon of Dojima. This final phase is the mix between the previous two styles, an in-between of sorts which takes and combines qualities from Rush and Beast. And when it comes to this boss fight, I have to mention the music because, ah, amazing, brilliant, brilliant indeed. Saint Aizawa, an escort guard for Dojo Kai, Chairman Dojima Ogo. I usually follow the older brother, Morinaga. I keep silent attitude, but once it gets hot, it will not stop. This is the peak of Yakuza. This is two shirtless dudes beating the crap out of each other at its absolute best. His fighting style is insane, his combo just goes on and on. His heat aura looks immaculate with his pink hue and helix effects. The stage transitions are hyped to the max and the final arena completely covered in snow is just gorgeous. These ridiculously long QTE scenes perfectly establish that this is the final fight and I adore them. I also really like how long Aizawa's health is. It's one thing to needlessly drag out a fight and it's another to actually delivering on offering a meaty challenge for the final part of the game and Aizawa hits that glorious sweet spot. And that music, Battle for the Dream, one of the most emotionally satisfying high points in the entire series. If you had to pick a track to end off Yakuza, this one would be it. Absolutely phenomenal. My only issue is that the character himself could use a little more work. Certain aspects of his villainy are a tad rushed, though not enough to ruin his amazing fight. The peak of Yakuza. どうしてだろうな。今日はやけに兄弟が生き生きとして見えるぜ。ああ。俺にもわからねえ。お前とまた戦えると思うだけで心が躍る。待っている間に若返っちまったようだ。後悔はなしだぜ。忘れちまったな。後悔なんて言葉は。来い。龍馬。行くぞ。竹地。This is my favorite final boss in the entire series. It was going to be tough to top Aizawa, but they went ham here and I have to start with the heavenly music that this fight brings. It is an absolutely massive track, 8 minutes long and split up into 3 sections to fit the 3 phases of the fight. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I have heard that each section of this song is a remix of a different final boss fight theme in the Yakuza series. Here. Take a listen.
absolutely sublime. This fight starts off with Takachi's single sword style, which is this graceful set of sword slashes, which can also be tiger drop slash sword dropped with the right timing. This first arena is where Ryoma's relationship with Takachi fell apart, and coming back here is just a powerful moment. Moving on to the second phase and this fight gets a lot more complicated. In the first phase, Takachi is mirroring your single sword style, and now he adopts on copying your wild dance style and the fight has become way more difficult. He dodges out of most of your attacks, he has super armor at weird points, and the gun is a gun man, dangerous, but he still has a few openings and you can still win this fight. After that, we transition to the final arena where Takachi switches back to the single sword style for one last honorable duel. Though you don't have to copy him. But still, this is a great send off for the Yakuza series, and so is Ishin in general. This game has got to come to the West because it truly is glorious, just like this fight. Still, I recommend you play it right now. And with that, I have ranked all the final boss fights in the Yakuza series. The path from here is hazy, but I'll see you then.